Okay, you fans of popular culture of the 20th century, especially you music fans of the 20th century and you Beach Boys fans, that song that I just started this video with, that was Luau, the B-side to Surfing, that came out in November 27th of 1961. And I'm gonna take you fans to 2511 Mayberry Street, and uh, on this block is where the fledgling uh, Beach Boys, who were known at that time as the Pendletones, kind of a, a, a riff on the Daltones, uh, and also the fact that the Beach Boys and the surfers at that time, they loved wearing Pendleton shirts, wool shirts, because it got cold after surfing at the beach. I'm gonna take you to where Height Morgan recorded uh, one take a surfing, a demo for the Beach Boys, the young Pendleton tones. And he, he took uh, three takes of uh, Luau, which was written by Dorinda, his wife. And uh, they did four takes of lavender in this house at 2511 Mayberry Street. And here it is, the house that made music history. The first time they were ever recorded in a professional studio notwithstanding it was a home studio but like I said before Hyde obviously he wanted his young fellows to be comfortable recording before he he reserved space and not to he didn't obviously want to waste money at a more expensive uh, studio if they weren't polished and uh, apparently they were already polished because they did one take of uh, surfing and then a month later they did eight takes at World Pacific Studios on 3rd Street. So uh, they must have been pretty good according to uh, what Height felt at that time. And uh, here it is, here's the house. Nothing to speak of, just a little house, a little bit retrofitted, real modern. And thankfully this area looks extant like it did in that time period when the young Beach Boys were coming here to rehearse for a couple of months and uh, actually Hyde Morgan and Dorinda, they were friends of uh, Audrey and uh, Murray. And uh, they hadn't seen the boys for a couple of years and uh, they owned a, uh, a professional studio on Malrose called Stereo Masters. And uh, the way they got reintroduced to Dorinda and Hyde was Al was gonna record, he had reserve space, recording space there to record uh, the wreck of the Sloop John B. And he asked uh, Brian and his brothers, Carl and Dennis and uh, Mike to help him record that song. And when they got there, Dorinda said, she goes, man, she goes, that all that stuff has been beaten ad nauseum. Can't you think of anything original? And then that's when the famous uh, blurt by uh, Dennis, uh, Mrs. Morgan, nobody's ever written a song about surfing. And of course, the other the other fellows they were aghast because I mean, what would what would Dennis know about writing a song? Although he was athletic and he was a surfer on his own time, he was actually the own uh, the only uh, surfer in the family. Carl and Brian they weren't very athletic, and uh, Dorinda goes, "Oh wow, that that sounds like a good thing. Uh, tell me more about it, Dennis." And then. Then finally, he he let her he let her know about this new new uh, rage that was all over America at the time. And uh, he t he, uh, she asked him, "Can you whip me up uh, like a sort of like a glossary of surfing terms?" So that that glossary, that little notebook of uh, of uh, things that the way the uh, surfers in America talked at the time, she was able to write a lot of. Uh, surfing songs after that 
like I said, Luau, obviously having a surfer slant. And uh, they were coming here September and October, like I said, rehearsing. And Bruce, the son, he said that there were nothing to speak of. They were terrible. He said they had lousy equipment. Well, it was to be expected. They were so young. But uh, she rehearsed them until they got they got pretty much prepared. And then, uh, actually, uh, Brian had gotten a si at 16 years old in 1958. His parents gave him a, a two-track rail-to-rail -rail recording uh, machine called a Wolin sack. So he had pretty he already understood how to like uh, overdub and set harmonies up. And uh, of course, he was a genius when it came to the four freshmen. He could. He could sing exactly in perfect pitch, like, and he could set up his brothers and his mom and his dad. He, he would set them up and then he would overdub it and add uh, instruments to it on his own time. So, Brian was already kind of like, pretty much, he was just a natural genius, a recording genius, and a, mu a soft top musician. And, uh, this height, Morgan, he was a pretty interesting guy. He, they moved here actually with uh, his wife, Dorinda and Bruce in 1943. And uh, he actually, when he came out, the war was raging here in Southern California. All the work plants were opening and he got uh, military contracts. And he, would, he, was, he perfected a system of, uh, of shock resistant flooring. Uh, flooring that could take massive ton, tons of, uh, of uh, steel hammers to uh, forge out sheet metal for uh, aircraft fu fuselages, drop hammers they were called. And he perfected his, his own uh, recipe. And uh, that's how he made his money. And then after that, I guess after the war, he made enough to, he could just like record and start his own studio. So uh, he was a pretty interesting guy. And uh, if it wasn't for Dorinda telling the, the young Beach Boys, oh, that's been beaten to death. Can't you think of anything original? They even wanted to see, do a, a rendition of uh, Duke of Earl. And uh, so just to show you how they were not original writers, but she said that after she told them that, she said at that Stereo Masters, they got down and started writing that song, at least a, a rudimentary song of surfing. And then when they got to the house in Hawthorne, at the music uh, room that was a converted garage that Murray and Audrey built for uh, Brian. They said that they whipped it out pretty quick and it, it, it starts out when you hear it, it, it starts out with a chorus and it had three verses. And then of course, Carl, the genius, he added his, uh, he, added, he added that three chord riff that you hear in the song of surfing. And he, they said that he got that idea from a song that he liked ca called Hideout at the time by John and Judy. I guess it was a minor hit at the time. And then the way Mike got that doo-wop at the beginning of uh, surfing was uh, he loved that song Baby Talk that came out in 1959 by Jan and Dean. And uh, what with Mike being 20 years old, older than the rest, he was more like imbued with that 1950s doo-wop. 1950s type of uh, style of music and uh, Al quit in February of 1962 because they only got a thousand dollars for surfing and uh, he quit he quit because he said that's gonna be the only ever hit we're gonna ever have and they got paid actually in April of 1962 and he had already quit and they each got two hundred dollars so that's why he quit and then David started out the young 13 year old David and uh, he stayed with them on a year and a half. He made three albums. And then, and then like an idiot, when, when he quit, he signed his rights away to royalty. So he didn't make any money for the rest of his life off the, off the three albums. But Al came back on, his fourth, on their fourth album called Little Deuce Coop. And uh, well, thankfully Al came back at his great harmonies and let's not forget Bruce Johnston uh, lending his beautiful harmonies to uh, God Only Knows and California Girls. And uh, Bruce Johnson, he actually took over in 1965 from, from uh, 
he would he substituted for Brian so Brian wouldn't have to uh, tour but then uh, Brian found out that he had superb harmonies so I like I I don't think that song God only knows would have been a major hit as it was if it didn't have Bruce Johnson's uh, harmonies so uh, okay a couple more things uh, Hi Morgan, he uh, he signed a contract for publishing the songs with Murray in the beginning and he owned outright the publishing rights to uh, Surf and Safari, Surfer Girl, Surfin, Lua and Lavender and I think Karate and Judy and uh, he made royalties off that. I don't know when they left this house. Probably pretty soon after 1961 when they started making a lot of royalties. Surf and Safari was a major, major hit. And, uh, but he didn't, he didn't want to deal with Murray. Murray was a very obtrusive person to deal with, a very, very irritable person. So they just walked away from hundreds of thousands of dollars of royalties, uh, Height and Dorinda did. So, uh, here you go, 2511. And that's the house that made musical history in 1961, where they recorded one take of Surfin, three takes of Luau, and four takes of Lavender. And as you can see, it's pretty much extant that, that, uh, that style and that time period when the young Pendletones were here, except maybe for this school, it probably was added after that. So uh, wherever you're at, Carl and Dennis, good night, sweet princess, and Brian, Al, Mike, Bruce and David, thank you for all the happiness you brought to the world in music. Okay, thank you and please subscribe to my channel.